And I'm here in the GT Luscombe booth at the, I don't even know what to call it anymore. It's called Unite 2017, but it is the Christian retailers shop. And I'm hoping that some of you are joining us for our live broadcast. So that those of you that maybe haven't been able to come to the conference will get to see what we are releasing right now. So I'm excited about that. We're going to give people a few minutes to join us. Um, those of you that are watching online, there's a group that's here. And so we're going to try and take questions from both of you, um, as well as... Benita says hi. Benita. Hey, Miss Benita. It's good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. You're the sweetest. You just had a birthday, I believe. Hope you had a wonderful one. Very, very, very fun. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take you through some things that, um, for those of you that are maybe not a bookstore, but you're tuning in because you're my sweet friends and you you saw that I was going to do a live post. If your, your local Christian bookstore doesn't carry these, you need to go tell them that you want them because they're going to be kind of fun. There's a couple of things that are... I'm not going to say life-changing, but they sure are art-changing. So let me just go ahead and get started, okay? I'm going to start with some new pens. You know, I love the fact that there are so many great pens that we can use, but depending on what it is that we are going to be doing, um, not all pens work great in our Bibles. And so I've been looking for some new things that would work well for us, and we found a few, and I love them. The first one I want to tell you about, it's going to sound a little little strange um, because it's an, an initial. It's from the Micron, Sakura Micron family. So it's the same formulation of ink, which means that no matter what um, which one of these microns you use, it's not going to bleed through your Bible. So that's the exciting thing. But here's what I love about this one. This is a new nib that they have come out with. So much fun. Um, this one is called the plastic nib. Now, if you are familiar with microns, you know that they mark them on the cap. And here's what the funny thing is. It's called a PN. And so when you say, do you have that PN pen? It sounds like you're saying pen, pen. But it's the plastic nib. And here's what I love about it, guys. Um, you know, some of us that are like using a lot of different medias on our artwork, we sometimes our microns get stopped up and they don't like to play nicely with all the different mediums. This is a plastic nib and you're not going to have the same problem that you have with that. The other thing that's really cool about it is that it is pressure sensitive. So whereas you may need two or three different micron pins to get the various widths of um, your pin lines, you just need the one and based on how hard you press, you can get a really nice thick, go up to about an, an 08 or an 05, and if you press lightly, you're down in an 02 or an 03. Isn't that pretty cool? Really excited about this. The other thing I want to tell you about the um, PNs, PN pens by Micron, is that they have come out with a new color in their color family, which is sepia. And can I just tell you, sepia is the hot, hot, hot trend. It's not brown. It's not black. It's not green. It's just this beautiful neutral. And particularly on our Bible pages that are cream in color, it just looks gorgeous. So you're going to want to try that out. Be sure and, and make sure that your local Christian bookstore carries the um, all of the microns in the, um, the sepia color as well because you're going to want to do that. There are, here's another, um, oh that's a, how did I have two, P, I had two PNs out here. Maybe I had one in, in sepia and not. Okay. These these aren't maracas. What these are, these are pen touch pens, um, paint pens, but normally our paint pens are so fluid that they bleed right through our paper. Um, these are not. These are an alcohol base that does not bleed through. It, it is going to evaporate on the surface. It works really well with the sizing that is in your Bible page, so you're going to love this. And they come in two different nibs. One is the chisel nib. 
and it's it's wonderful because you immediately write like a rock star. So let's just let me just write a quick. They love the maracas. <laughs> You know me, I'm always coming up with something. So look at this chisel that you're able to get. You get thicks and thins automatically. That's that's the hardest part about doing lettering, is figuring out that thick and thin. This does it for you automatically. It comes in black, white, and the three metallics, I believe, is what those are available in. So there's a large, and then there's a smaller size as well. So you get that same thick and thin with this, and that's pretty amazing. So let me just do a quick little. And those of you that have taken workshops with me, you know that getting thicks and thins for me are kind of difficult. So look at the, the two different sizes, just beautiful. Just beautiful, love it, love it, love it. So here's another product that those of you that are our bookstores that have not um, are not necessarily here, and those that are, are here as well, the cube that GT Luscom has put together that you've probably carried in your store, it's one of the best sellers. And here's a great reason to carry it. The big box stores, they carry microns, they carry these different things, but they carry them in such the large packages that people have to buy the whole thing. You've got Bible journalers that are wanting to try new products and find out which ones they like. So this is a sampler of all the new things that are put together in one, one kit. It doesn't take up a lot of real estate, it hangs. So you've got your pen touch pens that I just showed you. You've got a brush micron pen in here. You have some of the new souffles, the new glazes. Those of you that are not familiar with the Sakura Pigma um, glazes, the classic gel pens you're probably familiar with, you've used them, we love them, they write on everything. Sakura also has a um, gel pen that is a souffle. It's kind of opaque, a little puffy even, but it gives a nice, um, almost 3D look to it. So that's a great um, one. The glazes are clear and transparent, so if you want to add a little shine, if you want to do something like um, make a raindrop actually look like a raindrop and have a little shine on it. You don't want to get out some big glue thing or gloppy thing. You just get your your glaze pen. And all of them are in this wonderful little set here. So this is a product that bookstores, you're going to want these because this is going to let your, your customers try it all out. Then if you carry them as individuals, it's going to be a great way for them to um, come back and restock because these are consumables. We um, we use them up and we need more. Hello. So give them an opportunity to try all the different ones. There's also a display um, with all the new nibs, all the new colors. Um, it's a tower that you can, can pick up. So talk to your, your GT Lescom rep if you have not yet been told about that new tower of microns. It's a great point of purchase kind of thing. So anyway, you can tell I like pens, right? I love pens. So some of you, oh, I, you know what I didn't, I should have shown you. I was going to show you right here. So here is a sample. My little bird needed just a little bit of jewelry on it, don't you think? Every Everybody needs a little sparkle and shine. I did that with the pen touch in the silver, just added a little dot. The other nib is a bullet point, and let me see, I think this one, yes, that was what I didn't show you, is the other nib is a bullet as opposed to the chisel. So it writes beautifully, and look at how it shows up on your nice dark colors or card stocks. Um, bookstores, these are little sample test sheets that you can get from GTL, so people can actually try them out. Um, so that's kind of a fun thing. Okay, so sparkle and shine. Sparkle and shine. We need sparkle and shine. So some of you know about the fact that we have a metallics kit, but not all of you know. And so I thought I would show you some of these individual products because we love, who doesn't want a little sparkle and shine? Now, in reality, I'm going to 
going to tell you the names of these, what they really are, and then I'm going to tell you what I call them. This is one of the products that GTL carries that is not available anywhere other than in your local Christian bookstore. And um, they are the, the distributors here in the United States. And it's Cosmic Shimmer Sparkle Dust, and it's called Frosty Dawn Sparkle. But those of you that have taken a class with me, you know that I call this a jar of unicorn joy. Norma says hi. Hello, Miss Norma. It's so good to see you. Hey, you know what, Norma? I have some things. You need to hang on with me because I've got something to show you that's going to make you really happy. I know you like the jar of unicorn joy. So look at the sparkle and shine that's in here. I love glitter. I don't like to wear it. I don't want it to rub off of my page. And so this is a wonderful jar right here. It comes in the, it's kind of holographic glitter, but it comes in a matte gel that dries without you being able to see it. But here's where the magic happens. I love using it just to add a little sparkle, but we can tint it with our gelatos. If you've ever, if you've never been to Italy, there is gelato, it's kind of an Italian ice cream, which I loved on every street corner. And we have a phrase when we're over there, we need a lot of gelato need a lot of gelatos because they are so good for so many things. You can just scribble them out on your your craft mat, which is one of the new products as well. Let me we have done a journaling Bible mat. They come in a set of two. So you can put one behind your page, one next to you to do whatever you want to with your mediums and it comes with a spatula in it as well so that's kind of a fun thing I'm going to use that spatula but we can tint this so I'm going to put just a little bit of unicorn joy out here that's an appropriate name isn't it unicorn joy and I'm just going to use my spatula to just scrape off a little bit this looks like chapstick, it's not. It is a jar of creamy pigment, or it's a tube of creamy pigment. And the reason you wanna use something like this rather than adding paint to this or some other like dye ink mediums is that that actually waters it down and would make it bleed through. But because of the type of medium that this is, when we add in the, the um, pigment from the, from the gelato, and you just jar of unicorn joy. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm going, if you can see, I've just mixed it together. I'm going to grab a Bible page here. Show you just how easy it is. To add just a little embellishment down on the page. Kind of happy, isn't it? How can you not want a little sparkle and shine on your page like that? Just love it. Can you see? And when it dries, it's going to dry where it's still flexible and bendable, which is lovely. Okay, I feel a little bit like I'm selling the slicer dicer knives. I haven't said now how much would you pay. <laughs> <laughs> haven't said it yet. Um, and of course we can make pretty paper towel just by cleaning off. This is one of the things that you want to clean off really quickly, but you notice I'm just using a baby wipe and cleaning it right off. It's lovely. So let me tell you about um, one other sparkle thing if you have not um, heard about it. Foil um, metallics are just still a really super hot trend. Adding them into our Bible is kind of a difficult thing to do. John. Could I get you to hand me the um, Bible with that one? Exactly. So adding um, foil into our Bibles actually is difficult because the, the two products that are out there right now, um, one requires heat and pressure. It got, needs to go through a laminator. We could maybe do that one time through our Bible, not multiple times. The other thing is self-leveling glue. 
which makes sense because most foiling is used for um, if you're wanting to put some foil on a home decor piece or something and you want the brush strokes to come out. So um, if you will, but that glue does not gonna, is not going to stay where we want it. Like I wanted to put it inside the letters here on my page and I wanted it to stay there. So we needed something that was going to stick where we wanted it to stick and we found a great product for that. It is this um, Miction Relief. This is another product that GT Lescom is the distributor for. And because it's so specialized for what we want it to do, you want to, you'll want to go and get it through your um, Christian bookstore. So this is adhesive that stays sticky once it's dry. The other thing that you're going to want and need are the foil sheets. These are the Ranger foil sheets that we use um, in conjunction with this. But you'll notice that the nib of this is really, really teeny tiny, which is great because you can write with it, you can do, you can fill in those little bitty places like I was showing you. And then, once it's dry, now here's, here's the Jan rule for herself. At the end of my project, it's the last thing, I call these the accessories that we add to our Bible page. And at the end of my project, I want to add those little sparkles and shines and the the um, touches that we do and so I will put my glue on at the very very end thing and I'll go to bed because I get really excited about wanting to put the foil on it and it needs to completely dry so I actually did a, a little bit of scribbling on here a little earlier and you probably aren't going to be able to see it but it goes on white when it is clear it's ready for you to use it. So I've dried it and I'm going to actually put the foil on it right now. You, here's, here's the one thing that you want to know. There is a pretty side and there's this side and you instinctively want to put the pretty side down. You do it the opposite of what you think you're going to do. So you, you're going to look at the pretty side, put it down, use a very expensive tool called your finger and just burnish it. And I'm going to hold this up so you can see the reveal. I didn't rub very good. Give me just a second. I was jiggling the table and I was trying not to jiggle that for you. Beautiful. So just imagine if you had written a word or you had done and um, wanted to add just a little bit of shine to something or fill in a letter like I did there. It's a really great product to add just kind of as a last minute kind of thing. So um, I, my previous book was called Illuminated Journaling and it really was focusing on our personal uh, devotion and how we interact with God, how we encounter Him on the pages of our Bible. But I've written a new book and I'm excited to get to tell you about that. Let me grab it. Grab this. And you can tell I'm the author because I'm clean. I don't usually clean my mat, but I don't want to put my book down on it. So the new book is called Stones of Remembrance. And this, this particular book is designed to take those of you that have been Bible journaling for a while or any of your customers that have been Bible journaling for a while, they're ready to come. Their brain has started thinking. If they have done it for more than two or three months, they are super excited about the idea of wanting to create something for their kids or their grandkids. More of an heirloom, legacy kind of Bible. And this walks you through the process of that. Um, I wanted to do that immediately after I started Bible journaling, but I was really kind of overwhelmed with the process of it because it just seemed like it was too big. So over the course of the last two or three years, I've actually done 17 of these Bibles. So I've gotten a lot of practice and I figured out what it was that would help us accomplish that goal of creating um, that legacy heirloom Bible for our families. And so I walk you through the process. It's based on the story of Joshua and the people of Israel going into the, the promised land. You know, the night before they were crossing over into the promised land, 
Joshua was praying and the Lord said to him, you know, y'all didn't do a great job of remembering the things that I've done for you prior, um, in the prior 40 years. And so I want to do something different. This time when you cross the Jordan, I want you to have one man from each tribe pick up a stone and take it to the place that you will camp tonight. And then in the future, when and you'll stack those up, and then in the future when your children ask, what is it? Why? What do these stones mean? You will say to them, "These are the, these stones were put here to remind us of the faithfulness of God." So these Bibles that we're going to be creating for our families are actually our own stones of remembrance, stack stones of remembrance. And what I help you do in the book is walk through figuring out what are those stories that you want to tell, and how can you tell them most effectively. So I have twelve. There's all kinds of fun things, but there's 12 chapters that I walk you through the 12 stones that I chose. And in the center, I give you um, examples of that are actually from Bibles that I've done for people. And I share the journaling with you in here as well. The other cool thing, and even if you are not necessarily wanting to do a... Um, Legacy Bible, one of the things that I've done at the end of each chapter is based on the topic, I've given you a concordance of verses that are appropriate for you to use if you're wanting to talk about faith, if you're wanting to talk about wisdom, if you're wanting to talk about the character of God or obedience or those kinds of topics, you're able to actually look, here's some other verses that, that might work. So it's a little bit of a concordance, has some, some quotes and some prompts that go along with that. The other thing, it has a companion workbook that has tips and techniques and tutorials in the front of it. And then in the center of it, it's me helping you just tell a good story. You know, you want to make sure you've got all the details in there. And so um, the two things that people say in my classes are, how did you draw that? And you're a better writer than I am. And I, if you've ever taken one of your, my classes, I tell you, I trace everything. <laughs> And I've practiced writing, so I can t I can give you a few little tips and tricks on how to write a good story. Then at the very back are worksheets that will help you work through doing all of your um, how you want to what stories you want to tell and why you want to tell them. It's, it'll be instead of having 18 composition books like I had, you can have one workbook that keeps it all in one place. And of course, I've created a set of one and duds for our stores. Those of you that have been doing, um, been carrying our products before, we have had three sets of one and duds that were out there. It was botanicals, faith icons, and favorites, which are the things that people in class wanted to. They would say, "How do I draw that?" or "How do I? How did you do that?" So we created um, favorites one. Um, we have favorites too. And Norma, if you're still with me, this one's for you, girl. The very first one is the Pray for Israel guide. I know I've been promising that one to you forever and ever, and I actually found it and put it in this particular one. So I've got one of these coming to you just as quickly as possible as soon as we actually get them. We do have Stones of Remembrance one and done set too. So these are the two new sets that will be available with um, that at your stores as well. So the thing about legacy journaling that is kind of different, when we do our personal journaling, um, it's almost like taking a photograph. You were there for the experience, so you don't necessarily have to put tons and tons of journaling about what you experienced, because seeing the picture that you created on the on the page of your Bible is enough to remind you and take that past experience, bring it into the present, and make it as current as your current experience is. Right? The see and remember principle, if you'll, those of you that remember, remember that. So that is that concept. But here's, here's where legacy journaling is a little bit different. And those of you that are bookstores, um, a phrase that I'm talking about is that some people have been asking, is this a fad or is it a trend? And a fad is something that kind of pops up and is big for a little while and then goes away. But you know, honestly, there have been people doing Bible journaling for about four years now. It's past the fad stage. It's into the trend. So what we want to do is extend the trend. What are those things that we can do to extend the trend? We still have new people that are coming, have not even gotten started on this, but there are those that have been doing it for a while. And so something like legacy journaling allows you to extend 
the trend. But you still want to be talking to the folks that are brand new Bible journalers because what we know now is that when this started, about 70% of the people that began Bible journaling were not already crafters. There were some that were crafters, but not all of them were. And so coming to your store and having the ability to get great products without being intimidated with all the, the options that were out there, that was such a huge blessing for them. So those of you that as stores have carried those products, we really appreciate that. Um, those that are just now getting on board with the trend, there are still new people coming and still becoming um, Bible journalers for the first time. Last month, we did a quick little study and found out that 10,000 more people posted something for the first time. And you know if you're kind of in the whole social media world, you know that those that actually post are a very small portion of those that are actually involved in doing it. So it's kind of a, a great um, little bar for us to be able to tell that it is, um, it's, that it's still growing. It's still a trend. So we want to extend the trend. And Bible um, legacy journaling is one way for us to do that. So I was telling you that with our personal journaling, the story is right there. You see it, you remember it, and you're done. But if you're creating this for somebody else, you need more space. And so one of the, the things that we do um, to create more space is we use tip-ins. And if that's a new term for you, um, what that means is we create something. Here's what I was reaching for. We create something that you actually, let me find one for you. We create something where you actually use washi tape to create a tip in. It tips in. You can do all kinds of things. You can put, do stamping. You can determine how much space you need. And I talk about that in the book and, and give you some tips on that. But you need extra places to put bits of information. And so you can create these tip ins, if you will. Very fun to do that. So we have put together a kit that the stores can carry that is called the Tip-In Bible Journaling Kit. And it has all kinds of wonderful things. It does have a jar of unicorn joy in it. Yeah, I know it's it's called something else, but it it's unicorn joy. It's Frosty Dawn Sparkle, if you're actually wanting to order it. It has acrylic paints in it. It has spouncers. It has the journaling mat that I told you about. It has um, some of the colored pencils and, oh, let me show you. It also has one of these little frame stencils, which is great for if you just want to kind of highlight a word or do whatever, you can actually create that. So this is a great little add-on kit that allows you to have all kinds of things to do your tip-ins with. So it's a great new product. You'll want to carry that in your store. One of the other things that I'm excited to tell you about is that the stores, you're able now to carry this media tape. And what it really is, those of you that um, know that we use washi tape for so many things, what I love about this is that it's you can create it yourself. It, it takes ink, it takes paint, you can stamp on it, you can stain it, you can watercolor on it. You can make it personal to what whatever it is that you want to do. But I want to show you what I particularly like about it um, is that if you don't do anything with it and you create a tip in, it actually disappears. So instead of, sometimes I've had some kind of wild and crazy tapes that I've got going on down here. Um, and that's okay. Sometimes you want that, but if I'm not wanting to detract from the journaling that's there, then I want, that, I want that tape to kind of disappear. So having this, it comes in three widths. I think it's a half inch, a three quarter, and maybe an inch. I believe this is the, there's three rolls of it in here. Great thing to just keep out on your desk. So there we have it, guys. There is so much fun new stuff. I hope that if you are one of our GTL um, customers that you'll be calling your rep and getting things in the store because we're going to... People are wanting to know where to buy it. Okay. Are you a bookstore or are you an individual? Barbara. I think... Uh, 
Barbara Haynes, I think you are one of my fun followers. So you are going to want to go to your local Christian bookstore, and if they don't, if they aren't already carrying GTL products, which I think they will, it's GT Luscombe. I call them GTL, but it's GT Luscombe, L-U-S-C-O-M-B-E. They make sure that they um, contact their GT Luscombe rep and tell them that there's new stuff and you need to get it in because you want to buy it there. Because here's the thing, and I'm, just for a minute, bookstores, I'm going to talk to those that are my friends that, that have come to my classes. We want to support our local Christian bookstores. Yes, I do know that there are times we can go to the, to the big box stores and buy some of these products, but here's the thing. We know that when we're supporting a local Christian bookstore, we're supporting the ministry of that bookstore as well. And we really want to make sure that they have a um, the opportunity to thrive and prosper in the community because when somebody actually needs ministry, they can walk through that the doors of the bookstore and right there, they are face to face, eyeball to eyeball with somebody that knows the resources that are available to put to the to the particular problem. And so if we support them and we go and make sure that we purchase the things that we can purchase for our Bible journaling at the local Christian bookstore, it's going to make a huge difference. And if you maybe have not darkened the door of your local Christian bookstore in a while because you order things online, go find it and get to know the manager and let them know the things that you're doing. Maybe offer to do a um, workshop for them. Bring other other folks into um, the store because those of us that know each other on social media because we share, they don't know you yet, and they need to know that you're in their community and that you're a resource to them. So that's just a little word to, to my followers. I love you guys. You are so so wonderful. You are you are salt of the earth people and. You know, I realize that there's something virtual about this, but there's something that's also really real. We, um, we have a relationship, and so I want to thank all the stores that carry the product. I want to thank you that have bought the book. I want to thank those of you that have taken the time to come and hang out and let me do the Genzu knife thing for you. I, you know, I might have a fallback, fallback career here. I don't know. So it slices, it dices, and it makes it sparkle and shine. That's as long as we have something that sparkles and shines, we're happy. It was great to be with you guys today. Love you guys. I'm praying for you. And if you're a local Christian bookstore, I hope that I'm coming to do a workshop for you soon. Bye bye.